I know you can't wait to see Wong. I get it. Uh, I just want to make sure that you don't think this is one of those cameo every week type of shows. That's not. This week's episode of She-Hulk Attorney at Law resolves the conflict that stemmed from episode two involving Emil Blonsky and his parole hearing. After going through several hoops, Jennifer manages to help the former abomination get out of prison while helping his former colleague win against an Asgardian elf. As these plot points are resolved, Marvel fans get their first look at the Wrecking Crew, a group of supervillains in the comics with construction-themed costumes and names. Right before the episode ends, the Wrecking Crew implies that someone hired them to obtain Jennifer's blood. This could lead the series to a new antagonist and move it further away from its first act. In any case, this week's episode of She-Hulk continues its unique brand of humor while building up the character. By this time, you probably are aware of what Wong did during that cage fight scene in Shang-Chi. He was the person who broke out the abomination. And here is the reason why he did it. Because I required a worthy opponent as part of my training to become Sorcerer Supreme. And as Sorcerer Supreme, I insist that he not be punished for my actions. Later in the movie, we see Wong opening a portal. And through that portal, we can see the prison where Blonsky is currently locked up. Lord and Savior Wong make an appearance in this episode. And in her fourth wall breaks, Jennifer makes several references to the fact that we Marvel fans love Wong and want to see him, but also assures us in pre-anticipation of our criticism that She-Hulk is not going to be one of those cameo every week kind of shows. While we all know that exact comment is not necessarily true, we also know that everyone's favorite Daredevil is set to make an appearance. But one moment in Episode 3 that was kept under wraps until earlier this week was the surprise cameo of Megan the Stallion in this episode, with the episode's self-described B-plot depicting Pug, another lawyer in the superhuman division, helping the loathsome Dennis Bukowski after he was swindled by an Asgardian shapeshifter pretending to be Megan the Stallion. It's time to check out some other Easter eggs from She-Hulk, Episode 3. Easter eggs and references from She-Hulk related to MCU and comics. In Episode 3 of She-Hulk, we see Jennifer wanting to meet Wong because she wants to know why he broke Blonsky out of prison. You already know the reason. Because I required a worthy opponent as part of my training to become Sorcerer Supreme. What's interesting is... Does this take place before or after the events of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness? My money is on before. Wong tells Jennifer that he won't erase everyone's memories because it's messy. That sounds like a reference to the events of Spider-Man No Way Home, which is where Doctor Strange performed the spell to make everyone forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. When we see a lot of news channels discussing She-Hulk and Abomination, we see Los Angeles news, and in keeping in line with their report from Episode 2, we see a PR statement by Titania saying she's confident her legal team will make her legal troubles go away. That means we're going to see her popping up in the series again. In the same news, we get to see a picture of Emil Blonsky with its Abomination model. And you know that's pulled right out of the Incredible Hulk movie. And combined, they have his prison photo, too. In the subplot that follows Dennis and Pug, on the laptop, we see the YouTube parody, You Screen. If you scan the QR code, you will get to Marvel.com's page, where you can read free She-Hulk comics that inspired the show. And we also have the Iron Man 3's Honest Review video, which links back to the laptop Easter egg last week. At this point in the video, we see the elf transforming back, and this sets up the introduction for them to come in pretending to be Dennis. Pug is alerted by the real Dennis. In the prison, we see Blonsky's soulmates, and they're all wearing these white floral dresses, evoking images similar to that of the cult from Midsummer. Now, obviously, everyone knows that white dresses are symbols for marriage, so the Abomination has seven different soulmates while he is in prison. And I am still single. 
One of the reporters asks if Jen got her powers from a mafia hit gone wrong. It's, is there any truth to the rumors you got your powers from a mafia hit gone wrong? What? In the Marvel world, the equivalent of the mafia is the Magia crime ring, which appeared in the MCU TV show Agent Carter. The mention of a mob attack may refer to the Punisher, who became a vigilante after his family was killed. During the court hearing scene, we get more character witnesses on screen, and we can catch their names, and after googling each one of them, Amy Chance is the name of a Marvel supervisor, according to LinkedIn. Cowett is also the name of a costume designer that works in the company. Wong also talks about sending Abomination to the Mirror Dimension in Shadow Dimension. The Mirror Dimension has popped up in several movies at this point, and the Shadow Dimension is another name for the Dark One. This also popped up at the end of Doctor Strange as Clea Strange also got a tease in Multiverse of Madness. Clearly, this comes from this realm, and we are hoping to see more of it in Doctor Strange 3. The closing credits include an image of Jen squeezing some colleagues into an elevator. It's a reference to a comic cover showing Jen in a lift with Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil, and his friend, Howard the Duck. In the post credits scene, or should I say mid credit scene, we see Megan the Stallion as herself meeting Jennifer as her client. That really is Megan the Stallion, and she joins Jen for an office dance party. If you've ever wanted to see a Hulk twerking, now's your chance. Subscribe to our channel, and if you haven't already, check out this video on your screen now.